Oh Mary, you, you desire, desire so much to see Jesus loved. Since you love me, this is the favor which I ask of you, to obtain for me a great personal love of Jesus Christ. People do know about Our Lady of Cumbermere because it's an official title and people do pray to her that hear about her in this place and our community. People sometimes will come to the statue and they will start to weep and not know why. Why are they weeping? Because there's something very deep beyond the rational, beyond the visible that's happening. Love. I think they feel loved. Mary works in hidden ways. I would say if there are miracles, the ones that are most important are miracles of the heart, of conversions. Many people come here and have powerful experiences of God and their lives are turned around. I hope you've been to visit Our Lady of Combermere statue if you're new here. You haven't had a chime yet. Take time today. It doesn't take long. One goes to her for consolation, for refreshment, for repose, for encouragement. She brings the Holy Spirit close to us. She really does make present the Holy Spirit in a very special way. There's a nice little book that we have that tells the story of Our Lady of Combermere. A woman came to visit here, and she had a, a very special need, a sick husband. And so she prayed to Our Lady of Cumbermere, and her husband got well. And she, in gratitude, said, I would like to beg money to have a statue of Our Lady of Cumbermere. So Catherine was open to that, and she was talking with the staff, so she says, if you were to have an image of Our Lady of Cumbermere, how would you picture her? And they decided she would have open arms, welcoming arms. Anyone who comes here to this place, she would welcome them. The Mother of God would welcome them. So Catherine started to leaf through the stack of Catholic magazines. And there is this image by an artist named Francis Rich, who lived in Santa Barbara, California, of what we now have as the sculpture or statue of Our Lady of Cumbermere. Catherine wrote to Miss Rich and explained the story. And the problem is, we have no money. <laughs> and Miss Rich wrote back and said, I would waive my artist fee if you can raise the money to have this cast in bronze, it must be cast in bronze in, in Italy. Well, that was done. The money was begged, especially through this friend. The statue was cast. It was shipped here in a crate. It arrived in the spring of 1960 and erected in the spot where it now stands. So I became an applicant and went through all the things that applicants go through and uh, took my promises in 1960 on August the 15th. That what was significant about 1960 was that was the year of the arrival of Our Lady of Cumbermere. And we all had the opportunity to put something personal of ours down in the foundation that, that held the statue. And so I put a ring there and uh, it was quite wonderful. And that was a very great day in our history, not just because Our Lady of Cumbermere had arrived in her place, a beautiful image, but that the bishop came, Bishop Smith of Pembroke came and not only blessed the statue, but he blessed the apostolate. And he spoke some rather prophetic words. Bishop Smith, I know that as the years go by, great graces will flow out all over this diocese, all over Canada, the United States, and the rest of the world through Our Lady of Cumbermere and the great work to which these people have dedicated their lives.
you obtain from your Son whatever you please. Pray then for me, that I may never lose the grace of God, that I may increase in holiness and perfection from day to day, and that I may faithfully and nobly fulfill the great calling in life which your Divine Son has given me. She's our example par excellence. She's our model because her yes had incredible, profound, world-changing, universal-changing uh, ramifications. Christ, God himself, became man within her womb just because she said yes. If you look at her life, she didn't do any extraordinary works, but that changed everything. We hope that God will continue through the hands of our Blessed Mother, the dispenser of all graces, to bless this hallowed spot. We seem to be living in a confused world, one becoming more confused all the time. As the years go by, it seems to me that the solution to the things troubling us will be cared for by Our Lady. She promised to help us so long as we do our part. Catherine was, uh, she, she's, it's, it's a wonder she didn't faint because to hear that, those words, they're pretty, pretty big affirmation from your local bishop. By, By that grief which you suffered on Calvary, when you beheld Jesus die on the cross, obtain for me a happy death, that by loving Jesus and you, my mother on earth, I may share your joy in loving and blessing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit forever in heaven. Amen. Our Lady of Cumberland. Pray for us.